Hello everyone, this is Bentley from Kent, Washington, and today we're going to do a very short tutorial on how to keep shell-dwelling cichlids, or more commonly just called shellies. My specific shellies are Neolamprologus multifasciatus, or multis. Uh, they're this very pretty fish that has a kind of uh, whitish body with brown bands, beautiful blue eyes, and some yellow in their finnage. Um, as you can see here, it's very simple. They're a bottom dwelling fish that lives inside of shells. Uh, these are particular escargot shells. So let's go over some of the really important basics on how to keep this really awesome fish. So first off, the easiest thing to keep in mind is that these guys are complete landscape experts. They're going to move sand around a lot and they want a sandy bottom. As you can see here, there's all sorts of little hills and pits and valleys. That's what these fish like to do. It makes them most comfortable aside from the fact that they want the shells. You can also include a little bit of rock work. I've got that big rock in the center there. Really simple stuff. I personally use aragonite sand as this helps buffer pH up. So since I've said that, shell dwelling cichlids like to be at about 9, 9.1 pH. You can keep them lower than that, but to get optimal color, the best health, feeding, and most importantly, breeding, really target that about 9.0. The easiest way to do this, other than trying to buffer with things like crushed coral and aragonite sand and playing this crazy water chemistry game, Seachem uh, and a few other places also make this. There's Lake Tanganyika buffer. That's where these guys come from, is Lake Tanganyika. Really simple. Just get some Lake Tang buffer, add that to your water. Easy peasy, get you to 9 pH. You'll be, you'll be perfect. Uh, so these guys are really easy to feed. They eat all sorts of stuff. They're very easy to breed. They'll do it on their own. They're harem spawners, meaning a male will mate with multiple females in all these different little things, and they'll just keep little harems of, of females that they'll keep breeding and keep making babies and babies and babies. They're really awesome like that. That's part of the best part about this fish is that they're they're very peaceful with themselves. They're very community oriented. The, the adults don't pick on the babies, and they just kind of keep making this little army inside all these cute little shells. Now, speaking of the shells, there's kind of this shell or no shell game. Um, several of the people that I know who breed shellies quite prolifically, and the people that I got these shellies from, prefer using half-inch PVC. They'll use small elbows with little caps as their caves, and they've noticed they actually tend to get better breeding in those because there's a little bit more room in those than these, like, escargot shells. Now, if you want something that's a little closer to their actual habitat, you can use actual shells. But here's the biggest problem. Getting sh baby shellies out of shells is a pain. Now, they're scared of heights, so one of the easiest things is to take like a glass vase and put it in the tank and take a shell and put it at the top. And when they poke their heads out, they'll see they're way high up in there, and they'll get scared, and they'll run down to the bottom and find a different shell. You can't put two shells side by side. They'll just bounce from shell to shell. But with this many shells in the tank, it could take you years to get them out of there. And I mean, that's a little bit of an exaggeration, but not. It'll take a long time. With the PVC, you just pull them out. You put them over a bag or a bucket or whatever you're moving into, and you pull the cap off, and they just fall in. You're done. Nice and simple. So it, it's all about aesthetics. It's about personal choice. If you want the easy methodology for moving, especially if you're going to try and like maybe breed shellies as a profit-oriented fish, look at PVC. If you want something that looks a little more realistic to like the bottom of Lake Tanganyika, two escargot shells. They're pretty cheap. Uh, now, as far as we've gone through pH, let's go to temperature. You really want them between 78 and 80. They like to be a little warm. They're an African fish. It gets a little warm over there. The most important thing for shellies, they're very easy to feed. You could use flake. You could use brine shrimp. You could use crushed up store-bought shrimp, uh, the pre-cooked stuff. But for the babies, they're never leaving the shells until they get to a certain size, usually about three quarters of an inch or so. So when you do crush up your flake, if you've got a nice powdered flake food, mix it into some water to get it wet. Take a little pipette and spray it right in front of each of the shells where you know a colony of babies is. That will make sure that they get food. For the adults, you can just put it at the surface. They'll come get it as it comes down or they'll come to the top. Mine are pretty trained. They get used to me. They see my big hand. They hide in the shells. But the second that I've thrown food at the top and I walk away, they're up there eating no problem. Uh, another trick that a friend uses, he turns his air pump off and that's how he signals that it's food time. That's it. 9 pH, 78 to 80 temperature. Give them some sand and some shells or some PVC. You're done. Easy peasy. Uh, I personally live mine off flake. You can use all sorts of food, but flake is enough for these guys. They're very easy, 
Very fun little fish. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching. This is kind of the last video I'm going to do on Shelly's because my Shelly's actually are leaving as of today to my good friend Brad down in uh, Oregon. So that's it. As always, my friends, be awesome and take care.